if you are looking for some new recipes to try this week while you are doing your meal planning, I'm here to help. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. If you are new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. I share new recipes every single week, most of the time twice a week, but at least once a week and I would really love to have you be part of my YouTube family. This first recipe uses ingredients you probably already have in your kitchen, which if you haven't noticed, those are the types of recipes that I kind of gravitate towards. I don't want to find these recipes that have all these fussy ingredients. I want common ingredients and really yummy food. This first recipe is called Hearty Potato Sausage Casserole. It reminds me of potatoes au gratin, but we're also going to be adding in the element of sausage in there to have the meat. It's gonna be really yummy, let's get started. Okay, so I've got this large skillet, I'm heating it up. We will be browning our breakfast sausage. You just need a pound of sausage that you'll be browning. We wait on that to heat up. Let's peel our potatoes. The recipe calls for Yukon Gold potatoes. I'm just using what I have on hand. Once I've peeled my potato, I'm coming over here to my cheese grater with the um, attachment that does potato wedges really well or not potato wedges, potato slices, the slicing attachment. That's what I'm looking for. You're with me, right? I used this earlier to grate my cheese, so there's still a little bit of cheese in here, but it's all gonna get mixed together. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna slice each one and then throw them here in this pot of water so that they don't get brown while I'm doing the rest of them. And I'm just gonna continue to do this. You need about two and a half pounds of potatoes. So we've got our sausage cooked and it's drained. Now I've got my potatoes here. I'm going to boil these for like, I don't know, about 10 minutes. You don't want them too super soft because you don't want mush in your casserole. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on them. So while we're waiting for this to heat up, I am gonna go ahead and turn on our oven to 350. What were you saying this was called? Taters I've gotten. Potatoes all gratin. It's taters I've gotten. Taters I've gotten. You're so silly. That's right. Okay. That's what that is. Taters I've gotten. Okay. Stop eating the sausage, dude. Listen, we got to make sure this is good. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are waiting on the potatoes. And while we wait on the potatoes, I'm going to crush up some Ritz crackers. Now, the recipe does not tell you how much. I'm just going to eyeball this. This shows my age, y'all. But every time I see Ritz crackers or say the name Ritz crackers, I think of the song, Putting on the Ritz. Putting on the Ritz. Do y'all know that song? It's an older song. I did a tap dance to that song when I was a kid. And I took dance. I don't know if y'all knew that. I used to take tap and jazz. I took it pretty much all of my childhood. And one of our recital numbers was to Putting on the Ritz. The last thing I need to do to prep my casserole is to just mix up our um, cream of soup. So you can use whatever cream of soup you want. I think the recipe calls for cream of potato. I didn't have that on hand. So I'm going to use this cream of mushroom with roasted garlic. I've come to really love this one. So we're going to put that in this bowl. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Hello. I guess I just need to take the whole lid off, huh? That'd do the trick. And we're also gonna add in three-fourths a cup of milk. We're gonna stir this around and then you can add salt and pepper and any other seasonings you'd like at this point. And I think I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of salt and pepper and maybe a little bit of onion powder. Maybe like half a teaspoon of onion powder just to add a little bit more flavor there. Oh, look, I put the lid right in the cream of mushroom soup. Good job. Some salt and some pepper. Our potatoes should be done, let's go drain those. Okay, so I don't know if you could tell, but I was running cold water this entire time. But now you wanna rinse these off with cold water to stop the cooking process, but also to make them easier to handle when you're layering your casserole. Okay, y'all, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some nonstick spray here on this. This is a little bit bigger than a nine by 13, but that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of the sauce on the bottom to keep it from sticking too bad. And let's see if we can kind of coat. Oh yeah, it's kind of fun actually. All right, now we're gonna go in with our potatoes. I only cooked my potatoes for seven minutes and they are super soft, 
but I did use that attachment on my shredder. So that probably had something to do with it because they're not quite a quarter inch thick, which is fine. I think like six or seven minutes. You see some of these are like falling apart. Now we're gonna come in with some sausage. Honestly, I feel like I could have done a smaller dish. I think we are gonna move to a smaller dish, y'all, because I don't think I don't think this is enough. Take two, you ready? I'm a genius, let me tell you why. I halved the recipe, so of course I need a smaller dish. I wasn't even thinking. I was able to look at the ingredients and half it, but when I looked at the instructions, it said nine by 13, so I just went with it. So, if you're doing the amount that I'm doing, I'm only doing half of the original recipe, so that's why we only need this eight by eight. Now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of cheddar cheese, and then we're just gonna repeat our layers. Some more of this soup mixture, some more potatoes, more sausage, and cheese. We're gonna do one last layer, and then we're gonna come in with our Ritz crackers, and I probably shouldn't have done the whole sleeve because I was thinking nine by 13. Here we are. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. And I'm gonna melt a little bit of butter to pour over, just to give it that extra sauce on top. Press it down. Press it down now, y'all. Two hops, two hops. <laughs> okay, just a couple of tablespoons of melted butter. I'm just gonna drizzle this over top. Okay, let's cover it with some aluminum foil. I mean, we just can't let that go to waste. Let me spray my aluminum foil. Okay, this is going in a 350 degree oven for 45 to 60 minutes. If you're doing half, I would guess about 45 should be good. And then we will take the foil off and let it bake for another five minutes. Okay, I just took the foil off. I'm gonna put it back in for another five minutes, five to seven minutes, and we will be done. Taters I got them. <laughs> I don't know. Oh gosh. Ooh, we got some crusty cheese. Crusty cheese. I love Y'all, I turned cheese. it over to Brawl and it, I got a little sidetracked, so it's it's a little You got a little ambitious on that Brawl there, didn't you? I did. It's a little it's a little brown. But that's okay. That's what we like. Mm-hmm. Hopefully this is good. Please let this be good. Mmm. Please tell me it's delicious. Wow. Oh, I'm so happy. That is really good. I was worried. Oh man, the creaminess of that. The flavors in here are just overflowing. Okay, good. I mean, cream, you can definitely get the, the seasonings there with the garlic and the mm -hmm. onion powder and mm -hmm. stuff you put in there. And then behind that, you got the sausage yeah. flavor. So it was worth my hot mess. I was a hot mess in the kitchen, y'all. I don't I don't know what my deal was tonight. I just, oh, man. I wasn't focused, so. I was a oh, mess. Man, this is comfort food. Okay, good. I'm so happy that it worked out. Mm -hmm. I really was stressed, y'all. I really did have my doubts. I like the added little added. Is that breadcrumbs? Yeah, uh, Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers. Oh, wow. I forgot to tell you that was in there. Yeah. A little crunch and yeah. then a little buttery flavor. Yeah. Some salt in there as well. It's a go-backer. Oh, um, uh, that's what I was hoping that you were going to say, that it was a go-backer. One thing that Stephen and I were talking about if you really wanted to get the cheese all throughout, kind of like with potatoes of gratin, or yeah. potatoes of gotten, right. you could definitely take the sauce and put it in a saucepan and add the cheese and melt the cheese on the stove in, with the sauce. So the soup, the milk mixture, you could put the cheese in with that and put it on the stove top and just melt it all together. And then the cheese would be evenly distributed throughout. But I still love it the way that it is. Mm -hmm. Delici delicious. What was that? That was a fail. <laughs> That's when you, your brain don't work right. <laughs> My brain hadn't worked right Got all right night. Right, brain kink. Yes. I'm like, oh, <laughs> something happened. Just knock it a little bit. Tell them about what you used to say. People said I had a brain kink when they would see me in my pink Cadillac. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It was so funny because people you would stop do it at a red day. light. People would go. <laughs> Just the brain just like kink up. <laughs> you know what I mean? They would. They would like do a it, double take. <laughs> kind of get locked up, you know what I mean? You know, you know how it is when your brain gets locked up? Yeah, it's just like, wait, what? Like, 
Because it's something out of the ordinary. <laughs> so people would look over and they would see a pink Cadillac. And I have like, brain gigs uh, all the time. We have them daily. Yeah. All right. I am a brain kink. <laughs> good morning. Yes, I said good morning. I'm going to be making a dinner recipe right now at 8, 18 in the morning because we've just had a lot of people at our house doing work and I never get a chance to film. And in order to get a video out for this week, my opportunity is right now. So I'm gonna get started. Chances are somebody is still gonna arrive while I'm cooking. So fingers crossed that I can get through this. This is a quick meal. It takes about 30 minutes. I've got our chicken sausage defrosting right now. This is called lemon chicken orzo. You can use just regular chicken breast and just cut it up into small pieces and season it. As always, I will leave the recipe linked below, but I'm going to forego using chicken breasts and go the quicker route and use chicken sausage. I wanted to show you too, we've got some really good seasonings going on in this dish. This is going to be very fragrant, very flavorful. Yeah. You approve? I know there's cheese up there, mom. Tell them. Okay, so I'm going to slice up my chicken sausage. I just have this roasted garlic kind. You can use whatever you like or the chicken breast, like I said. Now, optional in this recipe are using either two zucchini or two summer squash. I'm gonna use one each. We're gonna grate it to go into the dish. It just adds some extra veggies without a lot of people realizing that there's a ton of veggies in there. So I've just got out my cheese grater and Gracie is very aware of what's going on. <laughs> Blue, I promise you it's not for you. You don't want this. Should I peel it? I'm not gonna peel it completely. It's got some character. I have never used this to do zucchini and um, squash, so. It's so easy, so easy, yeah, yeah. Look at that. <gasps> Y'all, how perfect is that? One down, one to go. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. I love this thing. <laughs> so I've got a large pot, like a stew pot, Dutch oven type, heating up to medium high. While I wait on that to heat, I am gonna get some lemon zest. We need this later. So let's zest this while that is heating up. It's one less thing we have to do later. And we'll also need the juice of this lemon too. We need two and three fourths a cup of chicken broth. So I'm gonna pour that here into this. And then we're gonna add some cornstarch too. Okay, we just need a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. And we're just gonna whisk that together. That's gonna go in later, but again, I'm just trying to prep everything so that once I get over there to my pot and get going, I don't have to stop and go do anything else. I'll leave the whisk in there and we'll whisk it again right before we add it. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, not a lot. And we are gonna add in our chicken sausage and just brown it up. It's already cooked. We just need to heat it through. Okay, we're just gonna let this heat through for just a couple of minutes. Not necessarily gonna brown it. These have been cooking for four or five minutes. They are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them out and put them over here on this paper towel lined plate. We're gonna take a couple of tablespoons of butter and add it here into the pot. Let that melt down. Now I've got a small diced onion. I'm gonna add that into our melted butter and we're gonna saute this for three or four minutes. Oh, I'm fogging y'all up, sorry about that. This has sauteed. Now we're gonna add in one and a half cups of orzo. This is dry orzo, it's gonna cook later, but we're gonna saute it first. And just stir it around and let it do its thing for just a couple of minutes. Now we're gonna add in our grated zucchini and squash as well as some minced garlic. You need about four cloves or just however much you wanna add. Stir this around. Oh my gosh, y'all, I wish you could smell this already. Wow. I'm really hoping that this is gonna be a new favorite. So now we're gonna add in a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. If you would rather use heavy cream, you can. And then we're gonna add in our chicken broth and cornstarch mixture. Let's add in all of the juice of this large lemon. We're gonna add in all of our lemon zest. We need a teaspoon of this Better Than Bouillon. This is the chicken. You need about half a teaspoon of salt as well as half a teaspoon of pepper. And half a teaspoon of thyme. Let's stir all of that together. <laughs> You're a mess. And we're gonna add our chicken sausage back to the pot. 
At this point, you, if you had chicken breast, you would add that back in. We're gonna cover it and bring it up to a simmer. So I think it's come up to a simmer, yeah. So we're gonna reduce the heat to about medium low. And we're gonna let this hang out for about 10 minutes until the orzo is cooked through. So let's set a timer. Can I help you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? Oh, okay. Something you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna stir it every couple of minutes just so that the orzo does not burn on the bottom. It's been 10 minutes. I just tested some just to make sure that the orzo was completely done. It's al dente. I'm gonna let it hang out for another couple of minutes with the lid off. And then we're gonna be adding in some cheeses and the rest of our herbs and it'll be time to eat. It's gonna have more of a consistency of a risotto today, which is exactly what the recipe says. So it's been a couple more minutes. We're gonna go ahead and add in our um, seasonings here. I'm just gonna do about a teaspoon of each of these of basil, dill, and parsley. And then we're gonna add in some mozzarella cheese, about a half a cup of it, and about a fourth a cup of feta cheese. Where is, oh, it's in the pot, Mandy. I was looking for my spoon. It's right here. So I'm just gonna stir this around. Oh my word. Okay, let me turn the pot off completely. Oh my gosh. This is the perfect consistency. If you needed to add a little more chicken broth or milk to get it creamier, you could, but mine is as creamy as it can get. Well, let's eat. Are you excited about dinner for breakfast? Look how creamy this is. I know. Oh, wow. Golly. That is delicious. Wow, it is hot. Yeah, be careful. Man, like this lemony, creamy, lemony, garlicky, uh -huh. kind of cheesy flavor. Then you get the herbs in there. That's amazing. I'm so glad. The whole time I was making it, I was like, wow. Just wow. Oh man, that lemon. Is it overpowering? Is it too much? No, okay, it's good. perfect. Okay, good. All right, well, mm. I, I gotta, I gotta. Mm. So I'll be back. Steven had to run outside to talk to a contractor really quickly. Um, but y'all, this will be in a favorites video. Just mark it down, just know it's coming. I always take my glasses off to eat. Do y'all do that? Especially if it's something that's hot because it's just gonna steam up my glasses. So I just take them off. The flavors in this, it is very much like a risotto, very creamy. I mean, it's got that zucchini and squash in there. You wouldn't even know it. It just feels kind of like it's a noodle. Hang on, Cole had some. Let me ask him what he thought. What? Zucchini and squash, grated. Both of which uh -huh. I don't like. I know, but do you like this? He was shocked to hear that there's zucchini and squash in here because he doesn't like it usually. It's grated in. Oh, no, but yeah. But you like? Yeah. Yeah, he said. One or two thumbs? One. One? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Cole is not as big of a fan as me and Steven are, but my goodness. Okay, y'all. Tonight's dinner is actually from one of you. It is our subby set. Okay, y'all, tonight's dinner is from one of you. It is our subby supper. If you are new here, each week I feature a, re a recipe. <laughs> if you are new here, each week I feature a recipe from one of you for one of my subscribers. So we lovingly call this segment subby supper. I tell a little bit about you and then we try your dish and do the taste test and all the things. This week's subby supper is a crock pot meal. It is going right here. It smells amazing it's been cooking all day i put it in the crock pot this morning we'll go back in time and i'll show you how to do it this crock pot recipe comes from whitney whitney said she is married to the best guy in the world i may argue you there i mean every wife would argue you right but her husband's name is eric they have been married for eight years and they have two daughters reagan and aniston she said they are bama fans i'll forgive you coming from this clemson tiger who live in the hoosier state did i say that right i feel like i'm always saying that wrong is it Hoosier? It's not Hoosier. It's Hoosier. We're going with it. And she said that they really enjoy watching my channel and our sweet family. So thank you so much, Whitney. This particular recipe is a recipe for French dip sandwiches. And we're going to cook the French dips in the crock pot all day, shred it up, put it on hoagie rolls for dinner tonight, and we'll have the au jus to dip it in. Y'all, 
it's gonna be good. Okay, this is a very, very simple recipe. I just have our chuck roast here in the crock pot. She said to use a three pound, this is a little under three pounds, but that'll be fine. We're also gonna add in a can of French onion soup as well as a can of beef consomme. Now, if you've been around for a while, you know I love using these two things with rice to make my mom's brown rice. Before we throw that in, I'm gonna add just a little bit of onion powder as well as some black pepper. I know you can hear some loud noises in the background. I do apologize. We are having some things done here at the house and I have to film this, but they have to work, so. Next, we're gonna throw in three jalapenos. I am not slicing these. She said you can slice them to make it spicier, but I'm gonna wait and slice these at the end of the day and we can add them to our sandwiches. We're gonna be adding in one bottle of beer. You can just use whatever bottle or can that you want. I have this fat tire. And we're gonna be adding in a fourth a cup of this. I have never seen this before or never heard of it before, but she described it as Southern soy sauce. <laughs> this is the Dale's steak seasoning. We just need a fourth a cup of that. So now we're just gonna pop the lid on and you're gonna cook it on low for six to eight hours. I'm starting mine a little bit later in the day, so I'm gonna do it on high for just a little bit before I switch it over to low. Okay, I've got these carrots that I need to use up so I'm going to peel these and chop these and we're gonna make some glazed carrots. Ma'am, can I help you? Are you, you're standing on my foot, honey. Yeah, thanks. There's a piece of carrot on the floor next to you. See, so yeah, it's not cheese. I'm out. Okay, I'm just gonna add all of my carrots to this large skillet and we'll add some water here and just bring it up to a simmer and let them hang out in that water and simmer for about 10 minutes. That'll get them nice and soft. I'm adding about two cups of water. That should be plenty. I'm gonna pop the lid on this just so it will come up to temperature quicker. This has come up to a simmer. I am gonna set my timer for 10 minutes. And then at the end of that 10 minutes, we will drain off the rest of the water. Tonight, we are gonna be serving our French dips on these hoagie rolls, which I just saw. The expiration date on these does not exist. It says 229.23. They are not 29 days this year in February. But anyway, we're gonna go with it. It's well before that date anyway. I just thought that was funny. And she said she puts hers in the oven and bakes them with a little bit of provolone. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I am gonna put a little bit of butter on ours too and then cover it with provolone and just stick it under the broiler for just a few minutes. I probably should have warmed this butter a little bit. I've got my provolone cheese here. There we go, just on one side. Or do you want it on both sides? Steven said, I don't care. I'm gonna go with both sides because I love cheese. Okay, these are definitely soft enough. I've put my little strainer here on the side. We are just going to drain out the hot water, the excess water. There's not a whole lot of water left. Man overboard. I drained off all that water. I'm gonna add in about a half a stick of butter. I think this is about three tablespoons. Let's add that in and let that melt down. Okay, our butter is almost melted. We're gonna add in about a fourth a cup of brown sugar. And I'm also gonna throw in some salt. And we're gonna let these hang out on about medium heat for four or five minutes. And then these will be done. Okay, I'm gonna pop these under the broiler for just a couple of minutes. And let's shred our French dips. I'm also gonna grab out these jalapenos. And we can slice those up and put them on our sandwiches. So I went ahead and shredded all of our meat. Steven ladled some of the sauce out for us for dipping. I'm gonna throw the meat back in here just so it gets good and juicy. I also just about burnt, or kinda did burn, our uh, hoagie buns, but Steven saved the day on that one. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I think that's the one I'm gonna put it on. Is that the top? I don't guess it really matters, babe. We'll just slide <laughs> it over there. There like you that. go. Look at that, drop it in on the floor. That's how we roll. Casualty. One got away. 10 second roll, you better pick it up. No, no. <laughs> and then here. he sliced up these jalapenos for his. I think I might do that on mine too because that's good stuff right there. Man, look at that. And then watch this right here. Boom. Oh, man. And then you have some sauce over there, right? Uh, yeah, let me show you what I'm working with. <laughs> Bad boy. Let's go to the table. Yep. Really bold flavors in the 
sauce that we're using. Classic French dip or different? Like a spam. It's like a spin like on spin it? Spin on it, yeah. Okay. With the, the jalapenos in there like that? Yeah. Man, that is a nice touch. Really okay. good. Great roast. Yeah. You know, flavors in there. I think the jalapenos, we've had kind of something like that before. Right. But to be able to dip it in there. Yes. That's just really good. You got to try the carrots too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are the carrots good? That is really good. <laughs> buttery. Yeah. Really buttery. Got a little sweetness to them as well. Good. Well, Whitney, we are enjoying this so much. It is so tender and juicy. And this au jus is just right on point. And y'all, these carrots are so buttery and sugary and delicious. <laughs> what is that? Mm. Sounds like an ogre over there. A meal like this makes you feel like an ogre. Okay. Because it's good and messy. That's right. If it ain't messy, it's not going to be good. That's right.